Okay, one of the next things on my long list of things people want me to make um, is a sheath for a meat cleaver. And in particular, this old meat cleaver that somebody had that um, Bridge Tool Company in St. Louis. But anyway, um, they specifically asked for, they want a hole in the sheet to where it'll still be able to hang up. Which makes me think that they're expecting me to basically cover the blade. Which I may or may not do all of that. I haven't really decided yet. But like all things, we'll start with a tracing around the outside of the meat cleaver. And then I can figure out a pattern from there. So my thoughts on it is to do something similar to what I do with my round knife uh, sheath, where it's closed in on one side and you have to rotate the knife out of it so that when it's locked in there, you can't ever get the point sticking up out where you can hurt yourself with it. And something similar to that. You could also just take and make one straight piece that goes across and a big flap that goes over that kind of holds it in, but that's always going to kind of wiggle and wobble a little bit. So my preference is to be starting up here, somewhere around there, we'll make a, a, a welt that comes out, and around this end. And then we'll even go up this end a little bit, just to keep that in. And hopefully, we'll be able to still rotate this out as long as we leave this up enough. Like I said, there'll be another piece that'll kind of move up. And we need enough for it to fold back down and around to here. So we're going to need... Let's say we want a spot about there to hold it in for the snap. We're about two inches from that. So we need to go up at least two inches and then maybe another half inch to go around. I don't have quite enough paper. Um, maybe just enough paper. We'll see how it works. Now, like a lot of my patterns, this is kind of three layers all Put together. I've got this piece here will be the front layer. This will be the welt on the inside. And this, if you follow this all the way around, will be the back layer. And all of it needs to have this hole punched in it. All right. Now a quick reality check on our pattern here. That it will indeed do what I think it will. tight. Let's go ahead and give it just a little bit more room down here. Yeah, I got some old, wow, that's probably 9 to 10 ounce leather. Pretty good thick stuff. That should do the job. I don't have much of it left of this piece, but it'll be more than enough for this. Okay, 
Okay, once we got that piece, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the pattern to the next line, which will be our front piece. Alternately, I could just punch holes through it and mark those little points and connect the dots. But I do need to remember that it needs to be reversed from the back piece if I want to be smooth side out on both of them. So I need to flop that over. And we'll probably move on down to another part of the hive here. Because I've got a spot down here that's just asking for this. This old leather is tough to cut, so I'm going to rough cut it and get this hide out of my way. And not follow exactly on my lines until I've got everything uh, rough cut out. Because then I'm not fighting with this chunk of leather trying to roll up on me while I'm trying to fight my way through a tough piece of leather. Because that's when you either make mistakes and slide your knife across the piece you don't want to cut. Or, even worse, make a mistake and slide your knife across you and wind up with a really bad cut on yourself. Now, for the welt piece, it doesn't matter which direction I've got it laying. We're just going to fit it in here. And again, I'm going to trace around the outside of it. And then just use some little points, just poke through with the scratch all here along my lines. And again, I'm going to kind of rough cut this out and then try to trim it to shape because this is a tough chunk of leather. The older a piece of leather is, the longer you leave it sitting around, usually the tougher it gets. Though some of them are just really tough to start with. And I think this one was just really tough to start with. And it's been sitting around a while. We're just going to use the same, I think it's about a half inch punch. I just punch that hole right on through there.
It's actually a little bit smaller than the hole that's in the uh, cleaver. It should do the job, though. Might put a grommet in it, too. Okay. Well, there are all my cleaver sheath bits. Okay, now that I've got all the pieces cut out, let's go ahead and start doing some preparation for assembly. And first off, I want to do where I'm going to put the stitching grooves. So I'm going to use this piece that's going to be the spacer to mark that. Because I'm not lining this project, I don't have to stitch all the way around. I could put the groove all the way around and just use the rest of it as a kind of border, but I don't really like that look. I prefer my stitching just to be in the grooves and then use another border inside of it. Alright, now let's do some edge beveling. Grab a little bit wider. Number two edge babbler here. Because this is pretty thick leather. Uh, the nor one I normally use is a, uh, a double lot edge babbler. It's a very fine one. Uh, this number two is quite a bit wider groove in it so it cuts off more of the edge but works really well for uh, thicker leather like this now everywhere from here to here along this side and you also need to bevel the back where i'm not going to have that spacer sewn in there that welt sewn in there now, i'll let it wet it down and do some stamping on it Now this is the same customer I've made a bunch of stuff for and he always wants me to put skulls and grim reapers and things like that on it. And that doesn't feel quite right for this old cleaver. But I'm still going to do something skull related for him. Uh, even though he didn't specifically ask for it on this one. But I'm going to do something a little bit more subtle. I've got a stamp I basically made to matte backgrounds with a texture of skulls. Um, for a project I did for him and I'm going to use that but I'm going to stamp a border first all the way around the edge which is why I'm marking and cutting with a swivel knife here because I'm going to use a meander border pattern and to set those up I usually just take the stamp and make what I call shadow marks of the stamp and set my wing divider for the other side the other the inside line of this and then I go ahead and cut that all right all right now stamping this pattern first steps in it are always going to be starting at corners and you kind of want to start um, straight opposite your lines like this line comes down here we want to line our tool up to where these points on it here and here line up with that line and then I want to do a stamp over here the same way whereas these two points line up with that line or some approximation pretty close to that and that'll get our corner started. And from there you can fill in towards the center. Like I said, I'll do kind of the same thing at each corner. I'll line up to where 
that line coming in points at the point there of the tool and same thing on this side you get these kind of spade shapes at the corners and I like to work from those corners and then come somewhere out in the middle try and figure out how to get it all to mesh together as evenly as possible and you can do that by just sort of stretching out a little bit further apart where you're doing the hits or putting them a little closer together until it all works out and you need to decide that in the last few impressions that you make you need to kind of figure out where you're gonna put them like here I've got my last space I'm gonna go ahead and put one right in the middle of it and then in the top here put some right in the middle of those and that one worked out pretty even so it wasn't too hard to make that decision now like I said around these curves I want to go ahead and do my impressions on one side at a time and leave about the width of the tool apart between them as if I left another impression there and move over and then I can come back along the outside of that curve and that'll leave these outside ones stretched out just a little bit to go around and fill it all in all right for what else I'm gonna do on this one I'm gonna take a beveler which is that tool right there and I'm gonna go around the edges with it and make all this kinda look like it's lower down in there more tapping like that now that my idea is because this customer likes skulls on everything is to take this skull tool I made a while back and I'm just gonna use it like a matting tool across the center here and just sort of fill in the area with a bunch of tiny little dead guys I'm gonna tilt the tool to the side create impressions that sort of fade a little bit and that can give me the effect that I've got them sort of stacked up in here without actually overlapping the impressions too badly there's gonna be some of that okay I've got it all stamped up with my meander pattern and my kind of scaly skull background and I'm gonna put some dye on this and maybe some finish before I call it a night on this project finish it up tomorrow and I'm going to use walnut oil dye because I think it's going to match the color of the handle on the cleaver pretty well I think this is called pro dye now instead of oil dye but I've got the old bottle that still says oil dye well it says professional oil dye that's where the pro comes from I'm pretty sure it's a dye that I really prefer working with I like the colors that I get out of it I don't have as much trouble with it as I do with the Phoebing spirit dyes um, with things like putting too much dye on and getting surface bronzing and streaks and so on. Now in this case, since I'm not lining this, I have to actually dye the back of the leather too. Back of the leather takes a lot more dye usually than the front. To get a nice even color and it always come out kind of a lighter color anyway. One of the reasons I line stuff a lot is because it looks more finished and even. But in this case, this cleaver is a rough sort of thing. 
So the rough look will be just fine for it. Alright, let's toss some Vaseline on here for some finish. Then I'm probably going to be done for the night, and I'll go back up tomorrow to finish this up. Okay, let's get back to these uh, cleaver sheets so I can get it done and get it off my table. Uh, I've been back and forth about whether I want to put grommets on it. I've decided that I, I will, and I have to decide that before I actually stitch it together because it'll be a lot harder to set afterwards. So I've got these big monster 5 8 grommets that... Uh, that's about the same size as the hole that's in the cleaver. And if I do this right, it should line up pretty good. But anyway, we're going to use a punch to widen out this hole just a little bit. got a grommet header here. Uh, this is actually a pretty good one. It's from Osborne. I like this style that has the um, the grooves that actually roll the grommet out rather than just a, um, some of the simpler setters. This one shapes the inside of the grommet as well as the outside. get some glue going. Double check our fit. I think that'll work really well. Goes in, comes out. Kind of locks into place well enough. Snap to hold it shut, it'll work. Stitched up, let's go ahead and edge, do some edge beveling because I uh, sanded these edges even with each other. So that means I've, in some places, taken off enough of it that I don't have my edges beveled as much anymore. Okay, and like a lot of times, I'm going to use a really dark brown, which is uh, this is Showdown, uh, Show Brown Pro Dye. Um, We'll make those edges nice and dark. Then some gum trag you can't. Gum trag, gum burnisher, what do you want to, you want to call it? You can use token all, you can use wax. Lots of different possibilities for this. This is just my preferred method. Gets in that edge, softens it up, and helps it stick together a little bit more when you go to burnish it. I've heard of people just using water and just wetting it down, which you'll shape the edge, but it doesn't then stick together the same way. Doesn't seem to last. This is one of those things that really can make quality leather work stand out from 
that mass produced manufactured stuff that you get on so many knives and things like that is finishing up these edges and really slicking them down smooth. It just gives it a lot nicer appearance and a lot better feel in the hand when somebody picks it up to have all those edges smooth. Okay, slide this monster in here. Check our fit real quick. And let's go ahead and mark where we want to punch our holes. I'm going to say right on this. Hmm. Do I want to do it there? Yeah. I'm going to go right in this corner. By pushing through with the scratch on, I made a mark here as well. I didn't have that super tight, so I should be able to just use that mark. Uh, if you get it too tight, you can't use that mark because the thickness of the snap will make a difference. And it won't quite fit. I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap. I had laying here on the table and use that so I don't punch through into my back piece. Punch that hole. And then this one, as I usually do, I'm just going to go down on my cutting board and punch it. For the heavier cleaver, we're going to go with heavier snaps. And I'm going to go with nickel ones. Or, um, yeah, these are nickel. To go with the grommet that I've added on here. These might have been stainless. Uh, I think they're nickel though. Anyway, I'm gonna set the cap of the snap there with the cup piece on it. And use the line 24 setter. go that's nice and tight same thing with this probably gonna have to open the hole up a little bit to push it through from the back side then we're gonna put our post up through there I'm gonna take the bar and put it inside so that it'll back that up Come on. there we are And then we're going to use, set this uh, stud part of the snap. And generally, if anything goes wrong, it's usually on the uh, cap side of it. Sometimes the stud will. Still there, so we're good. All right, put this in here, snap it closed, there's a cleaver sheath. <laughs> 